so before reading a newspaper article you should apply your mind you know the 10 reasons newspaper will add the 11th reason i am talking about the topics that Good morning, everyone. So I am going to take your weekly current affairs, and my name is C. A. Sonali Sindhal. I am C. A. by profession, and I am going to teach your current affairs uh, by this uh, basically same formula that I used to take in the GS. I will stick to the basically uh, exam demand. I am not here for I am not here journalist, so we will not discuss. Uh, Very relevant things that you generally find in the news channels. So we will stick to the demand of the exam. So I will show you how the particular news is linked to your syllabus. Secondly, I will show you how in the past it has been asked in the prelims exam and the mains exam. Right now, at your stage, maybe the view of your opinion is not as much required because you are not going to appear for the interview. in the interview they used to talk about the basically the news that is uh, two or three months older so we will definitely stick to the prelims and mains demand but yes there are some topics for that uh, they are continued because in the current affairs maybe it's new for you but as in this field uh, in last 6 7 years what i have seen is everything is old it just the news phase changes clearly so even you must know that uh, how in the last 6 months nothing new has happened actually the issues are existing since 20 years it just you to feel it new clear so in the upsc i i don't want to use the word even current affairs it should be contemporary affairs clear anyways uh, it's a established term current affairs so let's stick to that weekly current affairs so i will show you which were the topics that were important in the last week so i feel these five topics that were important in the last week and the same i will stick to the de uh, exam demand clear so delhi a quality there has been a numerous articles in the newspaper you must have read at least one even you have not even read it do you think it's not a, a new one it stays in the news and uh, moreover we experience more articles in the times of the winter because uh, it's basically supplemented by lots of factors let's see what do you uh, basically what do you think about the causes of the air pollution doesn't matter whether it's uh, delhi or any other city let's see syllabus first in j3 environment pollution and degradation if it's written in your syllabus what do you think what kind of pollution they can ask air pollution water pollution soil pollution land pollution even noise pollution but what question they will ask it will be dependent on the what's in the news more on which the international institutions are focusing more it's not like if they are asking the air pollution it just due to the current affairs it has been mentioned in your syllabus the next part is gs1 urbanization because the delhi is a urban city so in that also you need to talk about what are the even what your syllabus says urbanization and its issues so you should understand why it is all related to the urban city we will come to that but let's see what do you think and uh, again whenever you, you are going to read a article for which you have some knowledge firstly think yourself like what do you know about this already after that read a article then you will find that there are only one two points new let's see causes anybody can say again okay. stable warning hmm? 
Sorry. Yes. Yes, online students can also comment. Yes, uh, right now, air pollution. Think. Yes, basically, the Diwali pollutions. Oh, okay, uh, it's a geographical term. What is Western disturbances? So basically, uh, the wind is blowing from the west to east. Uh, so basically, it's coming from the West Asia to this side. The thing is, at its parties passes through the ocean, so it is carrying the water. So what happens is, in the winter, we have a rainfall due to the western disturbances. But uh, uh, that even helps to reduce the pollution, I guess, by rainfall. So western disturbances can be the cause of the rainfall in the winter. And that is even required for the wheat production. I hope you know that there are two types of the crops, Kharif and Rabi. And even if somebody has said the stubble burning, it means what? Uh, which crop is burned in this? Rice. So rice is a Kharif or Rabi crop. Clear? So you should also know this. Yes. Good morning, Anuj. Uh, Anuj, I have just started uh, about the Delhi air pollution. I was discussing, what do you think? What are the causes for the air pollution? Not uh, specifically to Delhi as such, but any other city you can talk about. Now, these dust particles can be because of the construction sector. And that's why in the Delhi, mostly whenever the there is a gap, one, two, three, four, they uh, basically change the time of the construction activities. They also ask to cover the that construction material because these uh, dust particles create the pollution. Think. Yes. Uh, now, can anybody explain the difference between the global warming and pollution? Although you have touched the right point that the carbon dioxide is not considered in the pollution as such. But the thing is, what is global warming? The greenhouse gases that is basically trapping the heat. It's what a global warming. The people uh, keep on writing this stuff also in the air pollution. What is air pollution? It's linked to the basically the uh, particles, whatever in the air that is creating the pollution. Carbon dioxide is is not a pollution as such because this is a gas that is required for the habitation of the earth. But yes, it can add to the greenhouse effect because it can trap the heat. Okay, think. Yes, you're right. We, uh, I'm going to come on this point. Like why it is more in the winter? Yes, you are valid that uh, due to the cold air, it's having a high pressure. Anyways, I am going to explain that in detail. Okay, so you have told this and this is what your newspaper says. Uh, biogas, uh, it's I think clean fuel. You want to say uh, wood fires. Yes, basically if we are not using the clean, clean fuel, that is LPG. Instead, we are using the wood fire. Even... If the cow dung is burnt, that is also polluting the air. Why the, there is a pollution? Because the pollutant gases comes out. Now, what are the pollutant gases? Let's look at that. You must have heard of the word AQI, Air Quality Index. So, what are the gases taken by the government? PM, particulate matter, 2.5 and 10. This is uh, telling the size of the particulate matter. Now, which is more harmful? Obviously, 2.5. Because it's lesser in size, what happens is it can particulate, uh, basically enter into our lungs. Nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, ozone. Uh, now, this ozone, I'm not talking about the ozone layer. It means the tropical, uh, basically the lower level, we have ozone. It's a pollutant. 
but if it's in the stratosphere it is protecting our earth from the sun's uv rays i hope you know the basic science so ammonia and then the lead again see we are not seeing the carbon dioxide carbon emission is leading to the greenhouse effect but carbon monoxide is a, a basically injurious to our health okay so these are the pollutants that our government is measuring this is what you have to learn now even the grading i i cannot predict like whether it can be asked in the gs3 or not why because in the past i think 2022 they have asked about the color coding with regard to the cyclone and the rainfall so and uh, air pollution remains in the news they can ask about this also at least uh, you should know the grade like from 0 to 50 we have a good 51 to 100 satisfactory at least look at this like uh, swear is 401 to 500 this is a factual thing it can be uh, given different grading as well and even when you we will feel that we cannot reduce the pollution we might put this uh, 201 to 300 to the good situation so it's dependent on the regulation how we are calculating the air quality index so these are the pollutants are taken by the government to see the air quality clear so this is what you have to learn for the prelims this col uh, color coding uh, mostly will be helpful in the gs3 as i have already told you what kind of question they have asked only one thing we can do by looking at the previous year we can predict the future this is only the guide what institutes are making that cannot uh, basically make sure that can be asked or not clear uh, write these pollutants in your notes because this is important for the prelims pm10 pm2.5 nitrogen dioxide that is actually not humanly possible even if you learn today uh, like one day before the exam you will not be able to see that so let's not focus on that at least it's clear uh, the good will be green and the uh, basically swear will be red just learn this because that will not be possible and uh, we are not even, uh, unless we know the exact colors we cannot even predict like one more thing you can learn is the moderate one yellow at least green and red Clear? Now, air quality index. Can anybody tell me what was the body that was existing with regard to the Delhi air pollution? Okay, this is a current body. Earlier, actually, the Supreme Court has set up a body by the name of EPCA, Environmental Pollution Conservation Authority. so it was set up by the supreme court so now uh, i want to just test this i know this is a simple information if supreme court has said this uh, which body it is it's a statutory body or not yes or no okay what is statutory body so it is through the act yes can supreme court make a act okay separation of power there are three bodies legislative body executive body judicial body so legislature the law can be made by only legislature judiciary 
can give the recommendation yes in india judicial pronouncements are taken by law itself but it cannot make law so in the exam you cannot write this and even if the supreme court is using the article 142 what it is written there for the complete justice supreme court can act that is why we talk about the judicial activism judicial overreach so basically if the judiciary is intervening in the field of the executive in the field of legislature it is against the separation of power but you can justify by writing in the exam you have to write the both way negative it's against the separation of power positive article 142 and even to achieve the right to equality so if the supreme court has set up this this can be used as an example in which topic gs2 separation of power but the simple meaning is separation of power there are three legs of the state legislature judiciary executive legislature makes the law executive implements the law judiciary administers the law the basically takes the disputes with regard to the law so this is a separation of power but yes in india we do not have a tight separation of power we have a checks and balances now it is a uh, basically gs2 topic maybe in future something will come in the art, uh, newspaper i will take on that now let's back supreme court has set up a environmental pollution conservation authority this body now recently has been replaced by caqm what it is commission for air quality management now this is has been set up through, under a act this is a statutory body caqm act but earlier epc falls for the delhi but in this we have taken the delhi ncr and the adjoining areas as well area of punjab rajasthan haryana up why because we have understood it cannot be tackled by tackling the pollution of delhi only it is affected by other states as well like for example if the illegal mining of the aravli hills is continuing that is also creating the dust particles this is affecting the delhi air pollution that's why it was in use but in the exam you will not be able to write this much how like for the prelims what they can ask from which states are Avli passes they can go for the physical geography but this kind of the uh, basically news articles cannot be basically how they can make a question always think how it can be asked in the objective in the veins it it's on you whether you are able to write that example or not like, well, if we are talking about the Delhi air pollution, mining should come. Clear? So, CAQM body, it is including the NCR region and adjoining areas that I have already told you other states are also included in this. So, earlier there was a EPCA. Now, in the future, CAQM can be asked in the GS3. And in the prelims, basic things can be asked about this body in the prelims now tell me if the government is making an act what should be written there consider yourself as a law maker again this is another rule if you are reading a law think about this it is made for something purpose that is needs to be addressed clear in that they will not write something new they will write the same thing only unless it uh, comes in the controversy that a uh, different provision we have to learn what can be written there we will invest in the technology to reduce the air pollution there should be a collaboration between the states to reduce the air pollution and uh, if something found is illegal or something creating the air pollution the action can be taken fine can be put this basic things will be written in the act so if you're reading a new uh, basically any topic think then read it and if you read something try to apply your mind the same words will be used in every act who are the policy makers or the lawmakers 
the human beings obviously they it uh, that cannot be made by the alien so he also have the same mindset why the act comes there is always a problem to resolve that law comes this is what is written in the act here yeah? so nothing a uh, very specific is written but yes uh, the one more thing you need to know is it is covering the joining areas also earlier there was a epca that has been replaced by the caqm now let's come to the uh, news article delhi air quality what has been highlighted by the newspaper like what are the reasons in delhi we have vehicles you have already told me but the thing is it is the highest contributor tires it should be clubbed together vehicles are the largest contributor then we have a coal and the fly ash now what is fly ash it has been asked in the prelims already i hope you understand ash you have seen ash tree so this is what a fly ash so basically after using burning the coal what remains is the fly ash ash after burning something ash remains so this is a fly ash we are trying to use it for road making we are trying to use the fly ash for the bricks making so this is linked to the environment even for the coal to reduce the fly ash what we are trying to use to wash the coal then we have a lpg a municipal solid waste this is also the problem now where it can be asked about the municipal solid waste again in the urbanization again in the gs3 environment pollution and degradation degradation so this chart will not help you to write in the exam they will not they are not going to ask about this but simple you already know this you have already told about the vehicle you might write the other reasons but you can uh, basically see the coal and fly ash uh, actually i have also to see uh, this uh, full form maybe it's uh, due to the social impact assessment or something i have to see the full form we are forward what do you think let's forget what your government says yes in the public vehicles you can say to reduce the vehicular emission we need to have a clean fuel also okay what can be the clean fuel now the government is focusing on the hydrogen energy or you can say e vehicles but again this also requires a technology this will create the e waste and for this we what we required for the e vehicles lithium that is imported from the other country which countries yes the abc triangle in the south america argentina bolivia chile so this is how you need to study if you think you will read the newspaper uh, just what they used to do in the newspaper is by just focusing on one criteria and they keep on writing the full page on one factor and then what do you do to write that you write that one factor and you think this is the only reason so before reading a newspaper article you should apply your mind you know the 10 reasons newspaper will add the 11th reason i am talking about the topics that are simple but yes in the newspaper there are topics that will be new to you sorry uh key clean fuel actually uh, the biogas you cannot write the repeated uh, points okay
basically we also have a rota vector so what it is this is an example to create a asset or you can say technology so what can i say invest in the technology to find the alternatives to fight the stubble warning and it can be written as an example as such but don't you think even if you don't know the examples as such you know we need to do, uh, invest in the technology yes i think it should be the first point <laughs> planting the trees a forestation this is what we require and even uh, there was a in the past we have seen in one report that in the south delhi there is a less pollution as compared to the cp why because uh, it's having a more forest area okay this point will come in the regulation i am focusing on the uh, heading part you need to think in that way only so this is point what where uh, how you can write it legal measures regulating the sectors so this is for the mitigation this is for the regulation please online students participate here at least add 1 2 3 points vehicles so basically for the vehicles we have already told the you can write in that way public vehicles clean fuel using the odi1 formula with regard to that sorry uh, yes uh, good case studies can anyway uh, mention Two thousand fifteen. Let's solve this question. Mumbai, Delhi, and Kolkata are the three mega cities of the country, but the air pollution is much more serious problem in the Delhi as compared to the other two. Now, even if this question will repeat, I will say this is not from the current phase. It has been already asked in the past year, in two thousand fifteen. let's try this question so basically mumbai delhi and kolkata are the three mega cities but the delhi air pollution is more severe than the other two what are the reasons here sorry okay why the ocean is a reason because that gives the moisture it means in delhi we have a dry air now if he, do you have heard the word relative humidity this is a geography what is humidity water content how much air can hold it depends on the temperature the more temperature the more water retention capacity less temperature less water retention capacity so in the delhi air there is a less water retention capacity what happens is we, we have a dry air in the delhi it means the rail phone does not come and that too also leading to the pollution more this is the first reason if you are saying the ocean winds ocean there are winds blowing what uh, winds do dispersing the pollutants but in delhi it does not happen and then you can also talk about the development of this particular reason you can talk about the other reasons like uh, other states are also affecting the delhi we have a punjab haryana stubble burning all this can be mentioned here and the thing is we have also have a 
cold air these are the having the moderate climate what is the difference between the cold air and the uh, uh, basically hot air that is what you have mentioned cold air always sorry okay high pressure it always sinks hot air always goes up because uh, the hot air it becomes lighter it will always go up the cold air is a heavy air it always sinks what happens is the pollutants come at the lower surface level and the hot air basically takes the pollutants upper in the air so this is also the another reason we have this is what your newspaper has talked it means even if you have not read so it should be covered by you due to the uh, basically previous year now let's look at the why words in winter cold air traps more pollution thermal inversion i will come to this point dry air holds more pollution cold air molecules naturally holds less moisture than the warm air molecules no wind to disperse the pollutants and moreover we do not have the rain this is what you have to write for that previous year and this is what is written in your newspapers now let's see what is thermal inversion okay what is the normal scenario in the geography as we go up the temperature should reduce or increase reduce thermal inversion is basically opposite thing let's look at it normal condition as we go up the cold cold air is there but in the thermal inversion what happens is above the cold air it's a warm air why it is happening in the geography it can be due to the valley it can be due to the cold night so this is what you need to prepare for the gs1 geography from this uh, basically topic it can be derived now it's your homework you will prepare the topic thermal inversion prepare your answer well what you will write in the notes causes of the thermal inversion impact of the thermal inversion this is what is required for the upsc causes of the thermal inversion you have already understood the meaning and the second is impact of the thermal inversion have you written it anuj it's uh, fine now okay done let's solve previous years of the prelims okay before that i want to show you the case studies that has been asked the i am just telling you the crux shutting down the pollutant msme the dilemma so basically it means the environment versus development if you are shutting down the polluting industries it is decreasing the employment so these type of case studies can also come in the ethics paper now if you read the newspaper always think always read like what bureaucracy is trying to do what politicians are trying to do this will help you to write the case studies better but anyways you can write the general one the basically the short term measures needs to be taken long term measures short term measures would, would could be we can ask the basically the msme to deploy the technology we, there is a basically scrubbers that can reduce the pollution technology can be used to reduce the pollution in the air but because we cannot shut down them but yes we can give the timeline to them to 
uh, bring that we can ask the government to give the subsidy to support that person we can have a crowd funding also to deploy that so have this mindset like what can be done because we cannot uh, you are not ngo you cannot go for the i will go for the environment you cannot say i, I will go for the development no matter in what happens to the environment you are going to be a bureaucrat so you have to be a balanced approach that is why in the mains always be prepared with the positives and the negatives you cannot say i am of the view of this second polluting factory closer leading to the unemployment so there is a established theme development versus environment so you should be prepared with that how we can have a balanced organic farming this is one example how development obviously we can export organic products it can reduce the pollution as well it can reduce the soil pollution if you are developing the basically any uh, national park or you can say the tourism park that is also conserving the environment that is also creating the tourism sector circular economy what is circular economy ye reusing recycling industry like for example your phone you can recycle it again to extract the critical minerals from it so this will be a circular economy and this will also create the employment this will also reduce the pollution it this will also reduce the e waste so this mindset should be there in you you are appointed as officer heading the section in the environment uh, pollution control board to ensure the compliance and its follow up in that reason there were large number of the small and medium industries which has been granted the clearance okay previous year is it visible sorry option 1 2 3 and 4 all okay i am going to ask uh, anybody want to put a b c or d you want to put b okay done it's done Yes or no? First is one, three, and four. Second is two and three. Third is one and four. Last is one, two, three, and four. I think it's done. Who wants to mark A, B, A? Okay. B. C D Okay Now tell me you PC wants to test uh, you on this basis like the what pollutants are released by the steel industry Can they test it can you go and test like which uh, gases are released there don't you think you should mark all If they don't attempt it, but we do not have a one, two, three. Carbon dioxide is not measured as a pollutant in the EQI, but this is a gas only. Can it can it not be released? in the carbon monoxide how it is written co adding the just oxygen it will become co2 sorry okay but can you say from the steel industry it cannot come outside 
it just to uh, basically the chemical reaction has to occur to become a carbon monoxide and anyways sorry in the steel industry we require a coal for it to run you will cover the steel industry in the js1 and it is an industrial topic you will cover and q coal is the one that is a fuel that is required for every industry to burn the thing is this question is not even testing you it is just testing your presence of mind basically you cannot go there to see like even if that gas is released this much what hap what will happen this should be included and always if you will read the wikipedia page also and other guesses for this uh, i think we require a scientist at least 10 to 10 scientists should come and see which of the gases have released in the this proportion this is not the question of the knowledge this is of the presence of mind i should have skipped this i should have uh, go on the factual things i should have go on the knowledge only but this will uh, basically keep you away from the upsc demand why what could i have done is before showing this question i have uh, given you the notes from the steel industry these uh, pollutants have released but i don't know in the future they will add 5 6 7 8 so the rule is either don't attempt this question if you have a doubt if you think you require a scientist to answer this question then don't attempt it how can you exclude some uh, gases from here these are this uh, chemical reaction clear so the answer should be all clear i think this was asked in 2022 okay again okay, this question yes requires a knowledge but now you are sitting in the exam you have to take a decision how you are going to think although i know the answer but assume i do not know the answer let's try to solve it how should go? excessive ozone in the air can trigger the asthma can and moreover yes this is a pollutant yes obviously it can i think it's a normal statement it can be true okay i will include the fourth so at least d option can be eliminated in the exam i know the answer already i uh, again mentioning it pm10 can penetrate the lung barrier and enter the blood stream yes this is a knowledge actually but at the time when i am sitting there i was not knowing this fact because uh, this is linked like you can be from the science and tech background you can be from the science background think about the commerce background people this cannot be known fact okay can it may be obviously right now i know this is not the answer but i cannot assume in the exam hall i am just telling you why because uh, what we try to do is we take the exceptions to solve the paper i would say this is a exceptional question if you do this question wrong it's fine but don't change your concepts to solve the question i know this is a wrong statement only pm 2.5 can penetrate but in the exam you cannot take a decision what if somebody would give the article that the pm10 can also penetrate okay in the year highest levels of the ozone pollution occur during the periods of the inclement weather cold weather this is a extreme statement the highest level only occurs during this highest is what the extreme level it can be at other times also so in the exam at least i can exclude this so i would include the third fourth so but 
here first statement this is a right statement that the regulations are given by the who can you learn this and the basically the fact part is in that year they, they have asked the same question in the mains also they said the pollution norms who with regard to the pollution norms all these are the exceptional questions you cannot predict in advance on these type of the questions don't decide your strategy to prepare clear but in the exam i will exclude this statement first i am just telling you my strategy to solve the paper this question if it is wrong if still then you will clear the prelims because you have to do the uh, questions that are supposed to be right so i will include the exclude the first statement so but if i would exclude the first i have not left with any option then i will go read again so this is on me basically to decide it means either i have to include it if i would include the first then i would mark the 1 3 and 4 but the answer is 1 and 4 b because this is a knowledge part from the next time now you should know only pm 2. if you are not learning from the previous years that is a bad part but if you are changing the strategy on the basis of exceptional this is also bad part this this is a learning for you so only the pm 2.5 can penetrate into the lungs and now these kind of the statements we cannot uh, treat them wrong and this is a factual part uh, now again this is a situation of 1% from the 100% that the upsc has given the factual statement as right but you will not change your strategy for that you have to see the previous years it's a particular matter now uh, it's not your part to know about it basically 2.5 and the 10 it's on the size of the particulate matter clear we have already covered air quality index it means upsc has even asked about this because the pollution is the new not new one it's new for us maybe because we are reading the articles so answer will be 2 3 and 4 at least carbon dioxide and methane it's not a part of it but yes these both are the greenhouse gases now uh, in the next week i will take the cop29 as well because the uh, articles would come because the recently meeting has happened so i will go into that the paris agreement kyoto protocol another article india needs an environment health regulatory agency even if you read the article what could be the crux what do you think why we require a, a environmental health regulatory agency okay for the regulation of the environment pollution we have a cpcb central pollution control board and uh, other body we have a ministry of environment forest and climate change moifc for the health what do we have minister of health and family welfare but there is no coordination between them so we can have a body that could have a basically regulating both together and even your who has mentioned there should be a one health approach human being animal and environment where you will use this knowledge gs2 health topic gs3 environment this is just a way forward but let's suppose upsc gives this question what do you think how will you write you will write the positive and negative and then you will give the way forward you know the positive what will happen with this we will be able to reduce the deaths with regard to the air pollution we will be able to reduce the diseases lifestyle diseases can be reduced we can uh, reduce the situation of the uh, lungs cancer so this is good for the health clear and it will be really also helping in the inclusive growth sustainable growth so these are the positive you can write but the negative could be uh, actually not negative as such but challenges to set up like who will uh, head this body whether the health or the environment who will be included in this so this will be now yes japan and the usa are having this body so india can also have this okay i was discussing about the way forward so one way forward you already go it that we need to develop a environment health regulatory agency you have told me about the technology you have told me about the regulator regulator environmental health regulatory agency a forestation so think uh, if you know about the reasons of something you can also find the way forward do you think we should also create the awareness among the public 
if even if you have created the vehicles but still people want to travel by their personal cars it means people community has to be taken to into it and we need to have a people for the a forest and drive also and we can also have a mg narega for this and anyways we always say for the urban area also we need to have a mg narega so we can have a combination of this so just don't let the newspaper to decide what you are going to write the way forward apply your mind then only you can clear this exam clear but yes newspaper will give you the topic on which you should think but that should be clear to you how it had been asked in the past how it is linked to your syllabus clear tell me more yes awareness campaigns are of the society including them it means we need to work on the various levels legal level you can say societal level changes technological investment in r and d for the decrease decreasing and if we can also have a work from home culture what uh, delhi government or the cm has done closing the schools going on online and then the work from home has been suggested to the public offices this can be used as in the case studies of the ethics paper and can be used as a way forward also here and here you should also talk about the existing bodies cp cb should act in the answer actually you have to show your knowledge as well if you know that there is a central pollution control board you also may, should mention this if you know ceqm you should mention this that they should implement the act we have lots of schemes but the problems in the implementation and even our uh, prime minister has also started a life movement what is life movement the basically un under this the people will try to reduce the plastic pollution will try to reduce the basically waste solid waste also so basically consumption culture should be decreased the pe uh, people should be sensitive to the earth clear it means the life woman can also be mentioned and even in your gs4 syllabus what words are used social persuasion social skills try to use the syllabus words in the answer as well if you are seeing the awareness campaigns what we are trying to do persuading the people and this is actually the task of the bureaucrat he is just going to be the advisor of the policy the policy will be signed by the politician he will bring the change at the societal level that is only possible if he will bring the attitudinal change of the people what people thinks the government is not doing this sitting in the private car sitting traveling alone oh my god lots of traffic here what the government is doing so this is what we need to change in the attitude and moreover that is why in the gs4 attitude formation is given in your syllabus clear let's move to the another topic recently bilateral investment treaty has been signed with the uae where uae is situated west asia uh, i have forgot to include the map from the next time i will make sure this is a saudi arabia so there is a uh, on the tip there is oman and here is a uae uae you uh, you can know it by dubai united emirates basically having the seven and one is dubai and abu dhabi basically yes so uae is the country in the west asia so if this agreement has been signed to which topic you will relate in the international relations bilateral regional and global groupings and agreements involving the india and affecting the india's interest so they are not going to ask in the gs2 recently the investment treaty has been signed between the uae and india what it will impact because this is will be a very narrow question they might ask uh, india's developing relations with the uae there you have to justify take it as a example and recently in the past also we have also signed the sepa comprehensive economic partnership agreement with the uae only in the past we also had a abraham accord what was abraham accord okay do you know the history of the west asia okay 
next class i will take this part only also but if we talk about the regional groupings there the main thing is in there the major powers are you can say iran versus saudi arabia some of the countries are with the saudi some are with the iran and the other part is also israel versus palestine okay maybe you don't know the location of these countries i will come to this in the next class let's stick to the bilateral investment treaty now because otherwise as i have not included the map you will not be able to understand where these countries are located clear now back bilateral investment treaty how it will be useful to your exam in the ts2 they will ask you india's developing relations with the ue or maybe with the west asia there you have to write the economic relations economic development on what part you will uh, basically analyze any country's relationships political so what how we are having a dialogues with those countries how we are investing the infrastructure how we having a trade with the countries scientific level so this way we have to proceed with any country so one of the example is bilateral investment treaty sepa it's on you which you want to use now let's come to the gs3 investment modules it is mentioned in your syllabus what is investment i don't want uh, any high five words anyways some people uh, i know so you have to answer what is investment okay uh, so basically you're saying the investment is something from which we will get a return okay addition to the capital stock will the investment generally what we consider is a investment like for example if you are earning 1 lakh from that 1 lakh yes anuj from you also i expect okay investment generally what we consider if you are, we are earning 1 lakh 50000 if we put in the bank it's investment but this is a savings for the economy this is a savings why because that is going into the banking sector further it will be given as a loan to the firms firms will make an investment for the country what is investment is creation of the roads building the factory that will create the employment investing in the technology this is also investment what you are saving that you said that the return expectation it's actually a savings for the economy clear now in your syllabus investment models is mentioned so what can we have a investment model public private partnership fdi foreign direct investment this is also investment model we can have a investment from there and one is bilateral investment treaty so in this obviously how the fdi will come what is foreign direct investment the foreigner is coming to india to invest here so fdi when he will come what do you think uh, when you will go to usa to invest what do you expect from the us government okay you will require that i should get a sport that i should pay the less taxes yes yes compensation uh, sport at least protection we will not go and invest in the syria for sure because we don't know in the afghanistan for sure okay we are also developing there but at least if you know there is a risk you will not go and even if the taliban has uh, busted out your uh, organization to whom you will complain in the afghanistan they are itself uh, basically ruling maybe you will go to the un united nations but then also they even don't know what to do with the taliban so this the investment will come where you have a protection to your investment so that is why we always sign a bilateral investment treaty this is what is written in the bits that how the foreign investor will be given a support by the government that you have told clear so 
in the past what we have done is i will not explain the vodafone case here fully but i will give you the some brief example for example you have opened a consider yourself as a us company you are coming here in india you have made transactions like in year 2024 do you think that this transaction is not taxable now after 10 years what government do making this transaction taxable by making the retrospective amendment what is retrospective amendment back date changes in 2034 it says the transaction happened in 2024 is now taxable will you invest in india then what it is it's a uncertainty you are creating the uncertainty for the foreign investment that we don't know about the government of india it will make the changes any time this is what is not required we have done so with the vodafone in 2012 we have charged them with the 8000 crores on the basis of retrospective amendment uh netherlands retrospective amendment is allowed as such okay let's come to the your fundamental rights have you read article 20 okay what are the three provisions are? have you covered fundamental rights yes self incrimination yes this is what was the third you cannot make the retrospective amendment but in india we have a protection for the criminal laws not for the civil laws it means in the taxation we can have a retrospective amendment this is allowed as per the fundamental rights as per the constitution but the thing is this way fda will not come if you are making the changes in the future okay this is a taxation part we will come it to later now the vodafone case we have charged 8000 crores that is why the country always prefer the bilateral investment treaties to be signed before so that they know how the countries is going to protect it okay what happened in 2016 we have unilaterally cancelled the bits with the 44 countries why india would cancel it because obviously that was not in the favor of the india because in 2016 the vote of netherlands court has said we have to seize the assets of the government government had to return the money of the vote of with interest so what they did is cancelling the bits because in the bit it was written that the country the investment can go to the their court netherland court can be approached by the vote of it was written in the bit signed with the netherlands so what we did is cancelling the bits then we have brought the model bit why the word model is used bilateral investment treaty what is bilateral between two countries multilateral many countries clear investment you already know treaty is agreement clear model bit why we use the word model it means it will act as a model document whenever we will sign a bit with any country we will use this document as a reference material to make the bits clear so this was what a model bit why this is important because uh, model bit was not good at all for the foreign investment because we have put some conditions in the bit that will reduce the fdi i will tell you the issues but thankfully we have not included this in the bit signed with ua so we have moved away from the model bit what is model bit i have already told you what were the issues in it okay foreign investor must exhaust the local remedies what are the local remedies in india district court civil court district court high court supreme court how much time it will take 
maybe 30 years, 35 years. You have to exhaust the local remedies for at least five years. At least they have not put for at least 30 years. But in the model BIT, they have put for five years, you cannot go to the other country's court. You have to try here in our courts. Then you can go to their country. So the Vodafone should try in 2012 till 2017 to go to the Netherlands court. Then the Netherlands court will decide what should be done. Clear? But yes, good thing happened is we have included only three years in the UAE. At least it should be the given. Because otherwise we will not be able to resolve the cases. I hope you know the problem. In India, would we have a problem? Judicial pendency. It means when you are writing about the GS2, their question comes, the judicial pendency is impact. One impact is, is also reducing the foreign investment. The investment is not going to come. How will you make an investment when you sh are not sure that it is protected or not? You should have a, even in the institute, if you have joining just for one year course, you always want a grievance redressal. You want to approach the admin that this is not happening at all. So the investor who has put in the crowds, obviously that would want a sport. Next problem was investment definition. What they have written is foreign investment should benefit host country. Host country is what? India. If the US company is coming here, it should benefit the host country. What is the benefit? What kind of benefit we are talking about here? There is no clarity. Maybe they are saying the it should create the employment. Like decrease in the technology maybe. It should not pollute the environment. Any kind of benefit could be there. But there should be clarity. Then on which it will be dependent then? Tribunals. The foreign company will go to the tribunal. That the government is charging the fines. Because uh, the government will say, because you are not creating the benefit. What kind of benefit you are talking about? So we have also excluded this. So now how it is important for you? In the GS3, they will ask you. They will ask you why the um, BITs have not been signed yet. Like what could be the model BIT? What should be the, pro basically how it should be? How, what are the issues there? These kind of the questions can be asked. But yes, BIT with the UAE can be used as an example also in the GS2 while writing about the West Asia or the UAE. Is it clear? Bilateral investment treaty problems. So these are the two main problems we had. But yes, we have removed it for the UAE. So in the future, we can expect that the government has realized this. Now there is another ISDS claim. This is a investor state dispute mechanism. It is linked to which World Bank? In the World Bank, we have a five institutions. Can anybody tell me the name? World Bank is not even a World Bank, it's a World Bank group. It is having five institutions under this. Yes. IBRD. Infrastructure Bank and Regulatory Development. IFC, International Finance Corporation, MIGA, Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency. I think one is uh, International Development Institution, IDI, and one is left. Can anybody check? IDA. ICSID. What it is? International Center for Settlement of Investment Disputes. This is what we are talking about. International 
center for settlement of investment disputes so it is in, now do you know what is un united nations there are specialist agencies of the un in this only these three are basically specialized agencies of the un other two are not under the un but this is in the world bank now this is the part of the international relations it can be asked in the prelims paper let's come to the international center for the settlement of the investment disputes icsid for this i am talking about india is not a member of it obviously india why it is not becoming a member clear in this is not favorable for the india if you have become a member of it you have to give the protection also to the foreign investment but there are some there is always a developed versus developing there are some problems we have to protect our domestic companies as well clear under this there is a isds claim that is talking about the dispute resolution for the investor now who can approach this center only and only foreign investor who cannot approach no even the citizens cannot approach like for example if we say if you will say this company is not uh, is creating the environment pollution here you cannot approach their icsid host country cannot approach this only and only foreign investor can approach the this now what it gives a protection it gives a protection it says the fair and equal treatment should be given to the foreign investment and it also says the foreign investor has a right to take his profits back to their country clear they have the right to take the profits back to their country is it clear so this is a isds but you should remember icsid india is not a member of it other four we are members and these three these are the specialist agencies of the un i know although i was covering the bit but i am telling you the other facts also but this is how you have to read because otherwise uh, maybe the world bank will not even come in the discussion from the current affairs if they are asking this this is a static portion also but sometimes current affairs also guides the static portion that has to be read is it clear so it's on the discussion like how we proceed i know there are uh, intermingling of some topics although bit with the ua i should discuss about the ua but i am focusing on the bit because that is the more important now you have also understood about the model bit in the gs3 they, if they would ask you should know the issues there it means we have a problem in the investment definition we also have a put a condition that we have to exhaust the domestic remedies is it clear any doubt what are still issues in the ua no talk of the mfn status now what is mfn most favored nation have you heard of wto world trade organization article 1 of the world or trade organization says you have to give the mfn status mfn is most favored nation what it means actually the from the name what we are thinking favor should be given but actually the favor is not to be given what is the meaning for example us company opens an enterprise in india it says and then the pakistan company opens here anyways we are going to discriminate them it's fine but wto says you cannot discriminate between the pakistan company and the us company if both are the members of the wto clear so you have to treat both foreign companies of the member nations at par but yes exceptions have been given to the investment treaties 
exceptions have been given to the free trade agreements like for example if you have a trade agreement with the us you have to give the favor clear is it clear what is most favored nation treating the two foreign companies at par belonging to the member nations of the wto second uh, principle of the wto is national treatment you have to treat the us company at par with the domestic company is it fine now some uh, if some article would come on the world trade organization in the future i will go in deeper into the world trade organization let's back to the uh, no talk of the amfn status so in this we have not even talked about the most favored nation status taxation power again we have kept out of the purview of the bilateral investment treaty it means again we want to do the retrospective amendment it has said if it has been kept out of purview what will happen the ua will cannot go to the their court on the basis of taxation clear now you have also got why it has been kept out of purview because we have faced a uh, international embarrassment on the basis of netherlands uh, vodafone and the karen energy actually karen energy is uh, also the same case uh, it will be very heavy if i would explain the vodafone case now because otherwise uh, you will just move out of the class because uh, i will discuss holding subsidiary and all but yes in the future if we would get a chance we will go into the vodafone case uh, more deeper is it clear at least you should know retrospective amendment in india it is allowed for the civil laws it is not allowed for the criminal laws as per article 20 let's look at the pvc question 2016 justify the need for the fdi for the development of the indian company or oh, sorry indian economy why there is a gap between the mou signed and the actual fdis suggestion remedial steps to be taken for increasing the actual fdis in india maybe you will not be given able to give the uh, basically ideal answer but i expect you will add some two three points to each of the part it's very far i am not able to see okay what do you think why the fdi is required yes it will create the employment okay investment infrastructure capital stock whatever you want to write think i know your names by the time i will your name as well yes simple gdp exports will also increase it means this not does not even require to read something you know what is fdi if you know fdi is an investment it will create something here it is going to contribute in the other indicators of the economy clear simple you can write this and trust me this is what you are going to write even after 2 years even you will write less after 2 years why because you will have a lot of knowledge you will not apply your mind you will uh, trust on the that recent knowledge not on your mind as such clear let's and it's not even a older question 2016 other why there is a gap what do you, why do you think even if we have a lot of mou sign what is mou memorandum of understanding It's just can i say it's also bit we have lots of it's also memorandum of understanding bit oh, i know there are the provision differences but some of the provisions will be same why do you think there is a gap even we have a mou but still fdi is not coming what are the reasons issues
here you can talk about the any kind of incident as well although if you are writing this you have to give the example also in the exam because you are now a main student but now in today's class i will accept this point clear because at least you are able to think in which direction i have to think with regard to the question and even you can write we have we are not a member of icsid although even if you will not write it's not like your answer is incomplete but if you are writing this this shows you are relevant to the current affairs you are knowing the exact things this is what you need to add in the current affairs classes but this should be there in your mind before itself by application of your mind if you are able to think about the protection it should be there but if you are going to give a technical word with regard to it this is actually newspaper should add if the newspaper is adding this it means you think you are not uh, basically about 20 years old you have you were not living in india you have come from other planet next from the recent discussion at least drive some points we are only left with the half an hour i have to cover other two topics as well less opportunities uh with regard to you are talking about the governance system in here how is our governance if there is a corruption lack of ease of doing business like if you if you have to set you have to get it registered if the government is not providing the support then also the investment will not come again actually you have to write the factors of production problem relating to the factors of production is actually the reason but the thing is you have to add this because it is asking about the specifically why fda is not coming even nobody has mentioned about a retrospective amendment lack of certainty in the government policies okay if you have included in that it's fine because uh, i think we should write it separately at least from the class we india is not a member of icsid and secondly model b it you can also write the about the discriminatory model b it what we have put at least 5 years we have to exhaust the for uh, sorry domestic remedies you can also write right now we do not have a model b it uh, sorry b it is you can write the situation that india has unilaterally cancelled the b it is india has made the retrospective amendment to the taxation other points can be general we have a problem in the factors of production uh, do you know what are the factors of production land labor capital entrepreneurship technology governance social factors so this is the problem you need to write in this question let's look at the other part what measures do you think even you should uh, mention the judicial pendency also this is also the reason the fda does not come the lack of protection you have said there you can use this knowledge like lack of dispute resolution mechanism okay remedial steps what do you think sorry okay we should improve the governance what is the tag line of the government minimum government maximum governance ease of doing business do use this kinds of the words we need to reduce the corruption improving the governance is the one step to go yes judicial pendency should be reduced i'm not able to understand okay scs yes we should can create these kind of things for the fdi to come because under this we are also giving the tax holidays as well oh okay space by resolving the land records by resolving the land disputes what we don't have digital land records 
Yes, others. Okay, it's covered under here only uh, CZ. Sorry? You can write this separately point also about this. Bringing the certainty. You can also write about the model PIT here. Amendments in the BIT. Protection. Again, you have to improve the factors of production. If the government will increase the expenditure in the R&D, this will also help. And the most important problem for the FDI is IPR. Intellectual property rights are not protected in India. What is copyright? Whenever there is a document is formed, and I think Shilandar sir has already taken the IPR topic. Copyright. If you have written a song, if you have sung a song, you can get it copyrighted. But do you think, uh, have you heard of that uh, song, uh, Kacha Badam? Obviously, remember, in on that also we have faced the copyright issue. Because the thing is, we are not, uh, if, like, to get it copyright, you don't even need to register this. Even if you have written the copyrighted material on your notes, that will become the copyright. How will you prove that? We are seeing the fake brands also. The Nike and all, these are basically available in the fake duplicacy. It means we are not giving the adequate protection to the intellectual property rights. This is also the problem. They will not come to your country if, if you are not providing so. Okay. Someday if we get a time, we will also dwell into the intellectual property rights. If some article would come directly on the IPR. But this is also the problem in India. Now we have discussed the newspaper article. You have understood how it can be linked to the syllabus as such. And we have also solved the one previous year question. Manipur violence. Again, it is emerging. I do not know like uh, whether sir has taken the older one or not. They have covered the Manipur violence in the classes or not. Okay. So we will discuss what was the situation here. But before that, I want to show how it has been asked in the exam. I hope you know the Manipur is one of the Northeast state. Northeastern region of India has been infested with the insurgency. Okay. For the long time, analyze the major regions for the survival of armed insurgency in this regard. And Manipur is existing in Northeast. It means in this you have to give the Manipur context also. How it is linked to your syllabus in GS3? Linkages between development and extremism. At least you know, forget about the topic. Internal security, it's in the GS3. Okay, let's look at the state. I will come to the Manipur. Let's look at the state, northeast states. There are seven sister states. At least look at the map. Try to remember the location. Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, Manipur, Mizoram. This side is a Tripura, Meghalaya, Assam and Sikkim. These are the northeast states connected by India. This is a West Bengal. This is only the connection we have with the northeast. It means it is connected by mainland by just 1% land boundary. Other 99% is connected with this side. Okay, which country? Thank God. It is connected by mainland just 1%. Let's see. The question was clear. Reasons for the insurgency. What are the problems do you think these uh, countries are adding? Bangladesh. Tell me. Okay. When was the Bangladesh created? 1971. It was earlier. East Pakistan. In 1971. 
if there would be a war where these people will go always to the neighboring areas it means they move to the meghalaya they have moved to the assam they have moved to the tripura this was the situation we were facing what will happen if the refugees will come there are already scarce resources they will try to take them and there will be ethnic clashes so it means the first reason in the armed conflict is the ethnic clashes why it is happening because they are having a different ethnicity different tribes are giving are living in these regions and you can say due to the refugees also and till now in the bangladesh we know there is a poverty where they will move again to the neighboring areas so bangladeshi muslims has continued to come in these states again i want to mention this thing although i am saying bangladeshi muslims in the northeast we do not have a conflict with regard to the religion they fight on the ethnicity to which race they belong they consider them to be of the Mong mongoloid origin mongoloid i think uh, can be related to the uh, china or the southeast asia but in our mainland which races are staying aryans dravidians they do not read re themselves to this race so that is why we have ethnic clashes and you already know uh, there were cases like in delhi if the northeastern people are there they might consider them due to the racial differences these are the chinese people nepalese people or maybe southeast asian korean these kind of the races a uh, basic racist comments should not be there this was also the problem we had clear ethnic clashes okay what myanmar is adding to it okay that's a very specific thing what myanmar have you heard of rohingyas these were also refugees again rohingyas were the muslims uh, they have been basically let the out of the myanmar where they will go again to the india they have also gone to the bangladesh again bangladesh uh, from there to india and to the northeast so the myanmar is also having the problem and china is always a problem china is claiming the arunachal pradesh it has even given the stapled visa to the arunachal pradesh people it means it is trying to consider them citizen of the china not of india obviously why it want to uh, northeast resources i hope government does not care about the people i'm not say, uh, i shouldn't use the word government politicians does not care about the people they care about the resources and countries are really not fighting for the people they don't want the more population here they want the resources of that region so the northeast is having a ample of resources that is why we again want this region and others are also claiming okay let's come to the history at the time of british era what was the situation of northeast it was given a separate administrative status it was not included as in the british india there were a lot of princely states i hope you have read in the post independence like we have integrated the sikkim in 1971 sikkim has become a part of india in 1971 and all this reason was not in the british india it was given a special administrative status have you heard of ilp inner line permit what it is it's just like a visa like even today if you want to travel in some states i will tell you which states you have to get the ilp like to go to punjab you don't require the any kind of permit as such we can go anyway but british era what they did was they have brought the ilp inner line permit what is it is like for example from the west bengal if somebody is moving to the assam 
that would require the ilp inner line permit permit sanction to enter this area what will happen with this ingla i hope in the uh, best being all at that time there was a subdeshi movement nationalist movement the most of the basically the at that time reformers were in the west bengal that too in the bangladesh they influence on the nationalist it will not happen in the northeast region it means even the nationalism has not spread out in the northeast region and due to the inner line permit they have always given a basically separate status they have been given a autonomy that is why they always ask for the autonomy third christian missionaries british india they allowed the christian missionaries in the world history you will read imperialism in the imperialism they also have the target of spreading the christianity in the world history you will read that how you can rule the people by ruling the god how the uh, basically the priest of any temple is able to say just don't do this because we have a belief so if you want to rule something change the belief so christian missionaries were one of them to spread the christianity but the thing is due to the christian missionaries the literacy indicators are better in the northeast india many tribes have converted themselves into the christianity as well so this was the time of british era special administrative status ilp inner line permit third is christian missionaries this was the impact of the british india what will happen the northeast india has remained in a isolation nationalism has not spread out or to the northeast india that is why after independence actually before the independence itself they have declared the independence nagaland region which uh, tribe is dominating there naga naga tribe naga tribe is dominating in the nagaland region now on the day of 14th august 1947 as az fizo the leader of the naga national conference has declared the independence it means again the nagaland becomes the problem for the india to integrate now let's look at the map at the time of independence there was a rachal pradesh assam was having a meghalaya in itself it was having a mizoram it was having a nagaland so there was a separate state that was manipur so assam was including four states assam meghalaya nagaland mizoram now this you will read in the polity when these were states has been declared as a separate state nagaland meghalaya around 2000 actually earlier they were given as a uh, basically ut status then separately from the obviously if there are different tribes they will ask for the autonomy at least one thing our state uh, our government can give separate state at least not a separate country now js1 topic regionalism what is regionalism if one region thinks i have a separate identity from the other region it can be due to any of the reason it can be due to different ethnicity it can be due to different religion like khalistan sikhism it can be different uh, due to that we are not having a development vidarbha region of the maharashtra 
it can be due to the filling that the other part is not developing to happen harit pradesh in the up why they want to be separate why the uttarakhand was declared as a separate state from the up regionalism filling telangana but when this regionalism of filling becomes a secessionist what is secessionist i want a separate country that is khalistan that is greater nagaland this is not good regionalism is accepted unless within a democratic setup but it is if it is going out of the democratic setup we will not allow this to happen in the northeast we have these secessionist tendencies gorkha land greater nagaland what is greater nagaland actually they want to take the area of the naga people that will include the myanmar region obviously maybe we have created the boundaries don't you think the people will be living here as well earlier there was no boundary so this is also the problem they want to independence what is the reasons we have already understood there are lots of ethnic different groups are living tribal conflicts are there i will come to the manipur now we have a international influence also the other countries are also adding the problems and due to the it is it is connected to the india by just 1% this is also the problem governance is always a problem if there would be a corruption there will be an excess between the criminals politicians and all okay let's come to the map have you heard of the golden triangle and the golden crescent on the northern border there is afghanistan iran and pakistan drug cartels i hope you know the taliban is growing the opium infiltrating to the india through the rajasthan borders pakistan or oh sorry punjab borders jammu and kashmir borders that is why we have a drug abuse in the punjab here also golden triangle myanmar thailand laos from this region also the drugs are entering to the india it means this is a region near to the organized crime again this is in your syllabus what is organized crime crime that is done by the group of people what kind of examples human trafficking drug trafficking money laundering smuggling of something arms trafficking so this reason is also like if there will be arms and trafficking obviously they have access to the arms obviously they are it's very easy to take the guns if we have a guns you already hate the government for the autonomy and you have access to the drugs and the arms and the money you will use this right and moreover this is a dense forest area the problem is what they do is they hit some people and they can hide in the uh, tree areas the dense forest we will not be able to find this this is called as gorilla warfare gorilla is an animal where it says in the dense forest camouflage effect actually if you will uh, like army what is the color generally near to the forest colors brown green or you can say olive so the camouflage effect is added so this is why they are content able to continue now let's come to the manipur specifically this is a manipur state the thing is we have a fall valley who are living here metis now this is a basically a fact this is a tribe name this is a plain area valley area and the other part of the manipur is a hilly area who are living here cookies and nagas the thing is why the conflict has started high court judgment manipur high court has said we should consider that the metis should be given scheduled tribe status st status 
okay what benefits you get under the constitution if you have got the status of the scheduled tribe yes reservation article 15 in the education institutions article 16 in the public employment clear opportunities you will get yes and have you heard of schedule 5 schedule 6 so this is again your homework in the next class what uh, previous homework i have given you you will read about thermal inversion causes impact you will read the difference between the schedule 5 and the schedule 6 what it what it is under the schedule 5 the tribal regions have been given the autonomy in the schedule 6 it is more specific to the northeast region what states are added assam tripura mizoram meghalaya meghalaya mizoram assam tripura schedule 6 so you will read the difference who have been given a power here president or the governor what we are trying to do is giving the autonomy in the in these what we have given is governor can decide which law of the government is will not apply here we are giving more autonomy to the local government we are giving more autonomy to the autonomous councils clear let's come back to here schedule tribes you have already told me you will get the right of reservation under the article 15 and article 16 article 15 for the educational institutions and for the article 16 for the a public employment now back here so the high court the manipur high court has said the metis people should be given the scheduled tribe status who will feel the discrimination now cookies and nagas they will say if you will give the scheduled tribe status to the metis what will happen they will lose the access to the jobs obviously if the share of the metis will increase the other part will decrease what will happen with this secondly metis people are not allowed to buy the land in the hilly areas because this is declared as a scheduled tribe area so they cannot buy but the cookies and nagas can buy in the plain areas so this is the basically argument given by the metis we are not giving the access to the scheduled tribe status this is why we are also losing the government jobs and in the manipur the larger employment is created by the government only but the cookies and naga says they are anyways getting the reservation in the obc in the dews and the scheduled castes some of the basically people under the metis are getting the reservation under this if they will get the scheduled tribe status it will reduce the a uh, basically area for the cookies and nagas and the other part is if we look at the 60 mlas basically here 40 are from the metis again political representation is not adequate of the cookies and nagas already they have not given a reservation it has just recommended i was just coming to this part who can decide there is a scheduled tribe status who can change the list of the scheduled tribe yes obviously president acts on the aid and advice of the council of ministers this is not the discretionary power of the president this high court has now removed this paragraph from its judgment which paragraph reservation status to the metis it has just recommended that we can consider to give the reservation status to the uh, basically scheduled tribe status to the amethis but it all this led to the conflict between the two the violence has started this was the problem and now it is again coming because uh, once any violence starts the some anti social elements also takes into the picture politicians also sometimes takes into the control of that but now how it is linked to your syllabus what are the articles coming 3 article 356 president rule it should be applied to the 
मणिपुर स्टेट हु कैन अप्लाई प्रेजिडेंट but for this we require the approval of the parliament that two of the both houses within two months it can continue for the six months but it can be again reapproved but the maximum period can be for three years for the president rule this is what you will read in the polity article 356 what is written here if there is a failure of the constitutional machinery in the state then the governor of the state can recommend the president to apply the president rule now the question for you is if governor does not say so can president apply yes or no no president rule is imposed by president only but uh, in the article it is written on the report of the governor article says on the report of the governor or otherwise it means even if the governor says no or he does not give the report still president can apply actually if we look at the basically past b r ambedkar was of th this opinion that this should be the provision even if governor says no then also the president can apply but yes within 2 months it should be approved by the parliament and it can continue for the 6 months then it can be reapproved re for the more 6 months but the maximum period for the president rule is 3 years then relating to this there is article 355 what it, it says it is duty of the center to protect the state from the internal disturbance and the external aggression so again under the article 355 that is why the central government has intervening in the manipur it has sent the central forces to control the situation of the manipur article 355 understood 356 understood 355 article 365 what it says if the state is not able to follow the direction of the center then also article 356 can apply clear is it clear 356 president rule it is linked to the 355 and 365 but president rule is imposed in the article 356 now how it is linked to the mains gs2 issues of federalism what is federalism between the center and states it clearly what says union list union law state list state law but what happens in the president rule they can dismiss the state legislature which laws will prevail parliament can decide parliament can run the state machinery it means don't you think they are intervening in the federalism so while writing about the issues of federalism one point can be president rule clear but if they would ask uh, now how the questions can come in the mains they can ask about the president rule why because in the past they have asked about the financial emergency article 360 how why it can be asked topic issues of federalism if the question would come on the federalism there you can give one example issues 356 article but if the question comes on the manipur way forward there you can use the way forward we can impose article 356 to control the situation maybe in the future we would so see such condition in that also if they would ask government steps then you can use the article 356 but manipur dispute is clear to you what it is metis imphal valley they are in the plain region uh, the high court judgment st status st status impact is it clear and the other region who are living there cookies and the nagas and you have understood if the question come reasons of insurgency in the northeast we have already understood the impact of the border countries and the impact of the uh, last connection with the mainland impact of the refugees impact of the organized crime drug trafficking arms trafficking and all so this is how you can write the answer and uh, way forward would be obviously we have to secure the borders 
border management that's why it's in your syllabus we have to also take the linkages of the organized crime with the other things controlling the organized crime should be taken developing the infrastructure in the northeast creating the more integration with the mainland developing the or uh, basically employment opportunities there the only solution to every insurgency is i think improving the economic condition if you are able to improve the situation there then nothing is required as such why in mizoram we are able to control because the people there can speak the english and they are getting the employment in the services sector that's why there is no problem of the insurgency in tripura same so to improve the conditions we have to develop the infrastructure we have to improve the connectivity with the mainland we have to secure the borders also so that the like china's influence will not be there on the natural pradesh so this is what i have to cover about this okay the other part was the minority judgment i will just uh, briefly mention about this it was in news you can read this article i will come on this in the next class aligarh muslim university has now been given a minority status by the majority judgment who are the minorities article 30 read this article fundamental rights okay which kind of uh, minorities uh, basically taken by the constitution religious and linguistic only two minorities are considered by your constitution one is linguistic and the religious one why they, they are allowed to establish their institution they have given a right and they can administer also like they can decide who will be the staff like they can decide the reservation also with regard to the minority the thing is article 15 does not apply to it it means you cannot give the reservation to the sc and st in the minority institution that is why amu was fighting for the minority status in the past they have given 50% reservation to the muslim people but the thing is what was the obviously earlier there was judgment that okay what was amu have you heard of mao mohammedan anglo oriental college actually actually it was established by sayyid ahmed khan around 1875 but it was declared as a amu aligarh muslim university 1920 by the britishers by passing the act the thing is the earlier judgment has said ajiz basha versus union of india that it is established by law not by the minority institution so it should not be taken as a minority institution but the recent judgment said there is a difference between the establishment and incorporation this is not relevant as such to your exam they are not going to ask specifically about the amu because this would be a controversial question but they will ask you indirectly i will show you the question they have already asked in the past mains question they have said there is a difference between the incorporation and establishment 1920 they have not established the institution they have just incorporated under the act it was already existing in 1870s by sayyid ahmed khan it means it does not lead to the laws of the minority status clear earlier there was a basha judgment that said it has taken a narrow interpretation of the establishment clear whether national commission for the scheduled caste can enforce the implementation of the constitutional reservation for the scheduled caste in the religious minority institution means examine 2018 again this question has become relevant why because amu in the news what will you write can it give the reservation status yes or no article 30 has to be written here clear article 30 read it in detail minority institution they have written the right to establish their minority institution they have right to administer it but they do not have the right to mal administer it 
basically you cannot destroy the institution this has also remained a judgment now what you can give the reference in the exam amu issue amu minority status either you can introduce recently amu has been declared as a minority institution as per the judgment just give the relevance in the context has to be given for this question it means for your exam for the prelims what articles are important article 15 article 16 these are anyways important article 30 in the prelims they will ask this they will not ask whether the amu is a minority institution or not but they can ask the conceptual question in the minority institution does the reservation applies you will say yes or no they will never ask amu is a minority institution or not but whenever the topic comes in the news you have to understand how it is linked to the static portion simple question has already been asked the articles Article sixteen. It's linked to what? Public appointment. No person can be discriminated on these points. Article thirty. All minorities, whether based on the religion or the language, shall have the fundamental right to establish and administer. See, look the word establish and administer. Now this in the news, you have to learn the line as well because it it may be uh, basically easy for you to explain in the mains. educational institutions of their choice article 31 article 29 anyways you will read about this so your homework is you will read about the first thermal inversion causes an impact then you will read about the schedule 5 6 difference third article 15 16 and 30 okay only one topic is left and that was the not very much relevant but i will start from here in the next class and new development will also come i hope it will be helpful for you and i hope you will do the homework as well and i hope you will come to the next class yes that's why it's a issue of federalism but right now if there is a failure of constitution machinery like from two years the dispute or the ethnic clashes are continuing so we have to do take some step because other